When you think of some of the most powerful creatures in the animal kingdom, you're probably thinking of animals like lions, tigers, or even bears. But what if I told you that there was one animal, one true king of the jungle that trumps them all? And of course, I'm talking about the mighty elephants. What, you thought I was gonna say turtles? Yeah, I don't think these guys are striking fear into the hearts of other animals anytime soon. But speaking of turtles, let's beat the entirety of Pokemon Violet using nothing but, well, turtles. This means all gym leaders beaten, all titans slayed, every team star base raided, and of course, we'll defeat the Pokemon League and become champion. Oh, and let's not forget about Professor Turo as well. As always, hardcore Nuzlocke rules will be used and I decided to ban terrestrialization for this run as well. Now the first issue we come across is our starter Pokemon. Director Clevel does throw out a bunch of Pokemon, but yeah, none of these guys are turtles, so we're not interested. But all is not lost, as I trade over my useless Quaxley I picked up from the Professor, and then I received a mysterious egg in return. Then we walk up and down the same pathway over and over and over and over again, until finally this happens. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you our true starter for the run, Leonardo. It has a timid nature, which is fine, although a special attack boosting nature would have been better. To compensate for that, we start slaughtering the entire Psyduck population, getting those sweet, sweet special attack EVs until Leonardo reaches level 14. Yep, I got our little turtle all the way to level 14 before we've even entered Mesa Goza. Why would I do that, you ask? Well, you see, coming up, we have a battle with Nimona, and in her rank, she has a level 9 Pormi that will hit us with terrestrialized thunder shocks. So yeah, we need a 5 level advantage in this particular fight to stand any chance. Before we do take on Nimona, we do hunt down a Tutel who once caught gets the name Donatello. We then reach the gates of Mesagoza where Nimona can make her appearance and then she forces us into a battle. She starts with Fukoko, but Leonardo can take it out with a single water gun. Now it's the Pormi, and as expected, it does terrestrialize, but Leonardo can outspeed Lendi a huge water gun before being hit with a terrestrialized thunder shock, but we don't get paralyzed, allowing us to finish off the Pormi with a second water gun. Katie and her bugs hold the first gym badge that we want. However, before we go charging in, guns blazing, I want to make some preparations. First things first, we make our way to Porto Marinara, and at the back here, we can jump with this tiny boat, getting ourselves a powerful TM for Leonardo, Surf. Then we continue our journey all the way to Medali City, where we can find one of the best items in the game, leftovers. With our preparations complete, we head to the gym and we take on Katie. Because Nimble Nose Struggle Bug, which drops our special attack every turn, I decide to lead with Donatello, who can bite back Literally. After a third bite from Donatello, the nimble falls and Leonardo can reach level 16 from the EXP gain from the last death. Tarantula is next up from Katie, and now it's Leonardo's time to shine, switching in, eating a bug bite, before protecting to get some additional leftovers health. A surf is unbelievably close to getting the KO, but the ball of yarn did survive and then crits us with a bug bite. Once again, we go for a protect for extra health recovery before using a rapid spin to squat the spider whilst raising our speed, making us faster. Last is a Tertiosia, who we can hit hard with a Surf before it retaliates with a Fury Cutter, doing decent damage back. But it's not enough, and we can wash away the bear with a second Surf. Before we can even get our badge from Katie, Leonardo is so excited that he evolves into a War Turtle. The Stony Cliff Titan Clawth is next on our hit list, but let's just say this was not the hardest fight for our team of turtles. Leonardo can take care of the giant crab with a surf in the first phase, and although the crab does take some performance enhancing herbs, powering himself up in the second phase, between Arvin's shoulders, water guns, and Leonardo's surfs, the poor crab never stood a chance. We go inside the cave, get some of those herbs for ourselves, have Arvin make us a sandwich, and then we take a photo together. Artisan City is our next destination, with Brassius and his plants needing to be cut down to size. But before we pay him a visit, let's hatch another egg. Turtwig gets the name Raphael, and at this point, I'm sure you know the name theme. That's right, I'm naming my turtles after historical artists from the world. One thing I did not take into account is that for whatever reason, Turtwig does not evolve until level 18, and yep, that's above the Brassius level cap. But I do have a plan. I backtrack to the other side of Paldau, where we can get our hands on the TM for Body Slam. And then at level 17, Raphael does learn the move Curse, and for those who don't know, if this move is used on a non-ghost type, it raises your attack and defense while also lowering your speed. So with the moves Curse, Protect, 
body slam whilst also holding leftovers, I'm sure you can see what I'm about to do. Brassius leads with a petty lil, and because this thing uses special attacks, it's not ideal to set up on, so we go for body slams. On the third turn, we can take out the petty lil while leveling up to 18. Small of now switches in, which is perfect for us to start cursing on. So we do just that, and we start cursing on the small of while its attacks can barely damage us. Eventually, we do get to plus 6 in attack and defense, meaning a body slam will absolutely obliterate the small of. Suda Wudo is his final Pokemon, who goes for a rock throw for pitiful damage, while Raphael can deal massive damage and also paralyze the fake tree with a body slam. Raphael gets hit with one more rock throw and then squashes the Suda Wudo with one final body slam. Also, I did forget to mention that Raphael did evolve straight after that fight. Hey, just quickly, I wanted to pause the video to thank you all for the support you've been showing. And if you have been enjoying the videos I've been putting out, I'd love if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you. The Open Sky Titan Bombardier is causing havoc and it's up to me and my team of turtles to teach the giant bird a lesson. Leonardo leads and a pluck hits us hard while a surf from our turtle does do respectable damage back. We protect to get some extra health back from leftovers before the bird goes for a second pluck leaving us on 14 HP. However, it's not all doom and gloom as this brings us down to torrent range meaning a second surf is now strong enough to take it out winning the first phase. It does have a cheeky snack powering itself up but our secret weapon Arvin also arrives. One thing that makes this Titan a bit of a problem, it is the only Titan that does not let you heal between phases, so Leonardo starts the second phase almost dead. We use Protect to help us survive, while Arvin's Nackley does good damage with a rock to- Um, excuse me? Why the heck are you going for a rock polish, mate? Oh, whatever. Unable to stay in, we switch in Donatello, who gets hit hard with a pluck before Arvin's Nackley goes for another bloody rock polish. Hoping Arvin stops throwing, we go for a Protect to stall a turn, but this absolute moron, who is already faster than the Bombardier, I might add, goes for another rock polish. Yeah, at this point, I know I'm going to lose someone. Bombardier then hits a Nackley with a wing attack, hopefully slapping some sense into it. Donatello is too low to stay in, so Raphael switches in, and finally, Arvin's Nackley uses an attack, smackdowning the Bombardier, while the giant bird hits it back with a pluck. Nackley keeps attacking with another smackdown, hitting the bird, but this time Raphael is a target, taking a pluck for big damage before going for a body slam himself. Needing to stay in, we go for a protect, allowing Nackley to go for a rock throw, leaving the Titan on the brink of death. This means Nackley can outspeed. Yes, ironically, the rock polishes did kind of pay off, although he only needed to use two of them, and crashes the Bombardier with a smackdown, taking it out. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how we got out of that one without a death, but you know what? I'll take it. <coughs> Team Star is officially on my radar, and... Oh, look, it's a shiny Swablu. Don't mind if I do. Okay, as I was saying, Giacomo is next up, but before we take on the local DJ, we do collect the TM for grassy terrain. Giacomo comes in on his Starmobile, leading with his Pornite, and I have Raphael take charge. Pornite hits pretty hard with an Aerial Ace, while we go for a grassy terrain, which heals us up a bit along with the leftovers. Then we protect, getting some more health recovery from the grassy terrain and leftovers. Now Pornite can hit us with another Aerial Ace, but this time we go for a Curse, raising our defense and attack stats. We go through this process of protecting, grassy terraining, and then cursing, until finally we get to plus 6 in attack and defense. Unfortunately, a plus 6 Body Slam can't quite get the job done, but it doesn't matter too much, as we take a Metal Claw like a champ, before Body Slamming the Pornite to its death. The Starmobile does intimidate us upon coming in, and then it goes for a Screech, dropping our special defense, but Raphael stays in, going for a Body Slam, doing great damage. Our Snarl comes away doing insane damage, thanks to the crit, meaning we can only go for one more body slam, bringing the car pretty low. Leonardo switches in now, getting hit with a critical snarl, dropping our special attack, and then a wicked torque, bringing us into torrent range, but a surf is just a slither away from securing the kill. Donatello is our last hope, taking a wicked torque on the switch, then getting a huge dodge on the snarl, allowing a water gun to deliver the final blow on the car. We set our sights firmly on the social media star Iono, but things are never that simple, as Nimona has a tendency to just want to battle us at the most inconvenient times. But fear not, as her team of baby Pokemon and our crocodile with the sombrero are nothing more than a minor inconvenience for us. In fact, thanks to Nimona, Donatello gets enough EXP to evolve into a Dreadnought. So if anything, I should be thanking her. Alright Iono, here I come. She leaves with a Wattrill, but Donatello can just drop a pile of rocks on the bird, taking it out. Belly Bolt is next in, so Raphael switches in, taking a spark for baby damage, 
but then gets paralyzed. Paralyzed or not, the plan doesn't change and we start cursing on the belly bolt who can do nothing but watch in fear as I power up and get our health back from leftovers. Eventually Raphael is at plus six and one bulldoze laser, belly bolt is destroyed. Luxio comes in and drops my attack with intimidate, but I'm still at plus five, so um, yeah. See you later, Luxio. Finally, it's her ace, Miss Magius, and the hex actually hurts a lot more than expected, but we just squashed the ghost with a body slam. Easy peasy. Melana Fire Crew from Team Star is our next target, and honestly, I could have just skipped this fight as it was that easy. But to prove a point, here's what happened. Leonardo starts and goes for a rain dance, which removes the sun, while Torkoal goes for a flame wheel that does laughable damage. Leonardo then goes for a surf, drowning the Torkoal, and leaves Mela no choice but to bring in a car to fight us. The Starmer build does go for a swift, which tickles, before back-to-back -back rain boosted surfs turn the car into a rust bucket, giving us the win. Now for those of you eagle-eyed viewers that noticed, Mela did in fact have a turtle in her team. A turtle that we do not have yet. A turtle that would complete the trio of grass, water and fire typings. A turtle that would be very useful for the next titan battle. A turtle I want. So after a brief hunt, we do locate our very own Torkoal, catch him and give him the name Michelangelo, completing the names of my favourite historical artists of the world. It does have the ability drought, which normally is amazing, but with half my team being water types, it's not ideal having a Pokemon that can come in and then weaken in my main stab moves, but I'm basically a Pokemon master, so I'm sure I can handle it. The lurking still titan is close by, so we pay the giant worm a visit, forcing a battle. And I know I just complained about having drought on Michelangelo, but a drought lava plume absolutely obliterates the earthworm in the first phase. It does try its best to escape, even going all the way up here for some reason, but we catch up with it, and some more drought lava plumes from Michelangelo can melt the titan into a puddle. We get more herbs, have Ivan make us a sandwich, and of course, get a photo together. The gym challenge is back in my mind, so we pay a visit to Kofu and his fishes at Kaskarafa City. Or village, a town, I don't know, whatever it is, but it, it's gotta be one of them. The loser can pluck Raphael, but we don't even care as I go for a curse. Because of leftovers, we protect them the next turn before a second pluck hits our turtle. This makes Raphael angry and he responds with a bullet seed, ending the fish's life in two hits. Well, True then thinks it's a good idea to headbutt our turtle, and spoiler alert, it wasn't, as Raphael goes for another bullet seed, sending Will Trier to the afterlife with Veluza. Crabobnable is mad at us and even terrestrializes, but Raphael is too nimble, dodging the slam before a triple hit bullet seed can take out Kofu's final Pokemon. I tell you what, Kofu looks awfully happy for someone who just watches Pokemon die, but that's none of my business. Badge, please. The Toxic Ninja Atticus and his crew are our next target, but before we leave Kaskarafa, we make sure to pick up the Earthquake TM from this lovely gentleman here. I send out Michelangelo, who gets hit by a Venoshock by Skuntank, and then goes for an Earthquake, which is just short from getting the kill. A second Venoshock comes our way, and now I wish I gave our turtle Soft Sand, and not the Petcha Berry. We finish off the Skuntank with a second Earthquake, and Atticus brings in a mini car to fight us. Revivrim brings Michelangelo to the brink of death with a Bulldoze, but our turtle hangs on, and eliminates it with an earthquake. Donatello tags in and takes a sludge wave well, and we trade blows for a couple of turns until our turtle comes out on top. Last is his Starmer Bill, who goes for a spin out doing okay damage, but harshly dropping its speed in the process. Then a rock tomb lands, doing some damage, but lowering its speed further. And because of the AI's obsession of not wanting to be slower, it keeps going for a quad resisted flame charge, which raises its speed, but only does two HP of damage. So we just continue to drop rocks in the car over and over until eventually it gives in and falls apart. The level cap has gone up and you know what that means. Yep, Raphael can become a Torterra, getting even meaner, and Leonardo is now a Blastoise looking huge. We go to Medali City, speed through a town full of people, go into a restaurant, and finally order a medium serving of extra crispy rice balls with some lemon of course. Why did I do that? Well, because that's how we get Larry's attention so we can have the gym fight. My boss will dock my pay if I spend too much time chit-chatting. Let's get this battle over with. Sheesh, looks like Gita has been overworking the poor fella. And unfortunately for Larry, things ain't about to get better anytime soon. Leonardo starts off going for a rain dance. And yes, I did just make it rain inside a restaurant, probably inconveniencing everyone inside. But yeah, I don't care. Kamala then makes Leonardo drowsy with a yawn. But on the next turn, we set up with a shell smash 
dropping out defenses, but sharply raising my speed, attack, and special attack. Kamala then goes for, um, yawn. Okay, you do you, buddy. Leonardo falls asleep, but yeah, we have a Chester Berry, which wakes us up, and then we can wash away the koala with a surf. The dunce mask comes in, only to share the same fate as the koala before him, going down to a surf. Last but not least is the raptor, but it never stood a chance, and we flood the bird with one last surf. The Mona still needs to be taught a lesson or two, and I really didn't want to embarrass her in front of her idol, Gita, but she brought this on upon herself. Her Lycan Rock takes a chomp at Leonardo with a bite before the turtle responds going for a shell smash. It's all downhill from here for Nimona, as Leonardo can just surf everything in sight over and over until the city of Medali is flooded. Okay, maybe I didn't flood Medali city, but we did beat all of Nimona's Pokemon. So ladies and gentlemen, put on your winter clothes, turn on your fireplace, and grab a nice hot chocolate to drink, as we're about to head to the coldest part of Paldea. It's in the city here that the next gym badge is in, and it's held by none other than the goat of rapping, Ryan. Donatello and Raphael take the lead, and Mimikyu wastes no time slashing Raphael, while Donatello goes for a lockjaw on the Bonnet, which is just short from the kill. However, Raphael doesn't let it escape, finishing off the Bonnet with a crunch. Mimikyu then sets up a light screen, and then Donatello goes for a lockjaw, and once again it's not quite enough to kill the Houndstone. The Houndstone then vanishes with Phantom Force, which means Raphael misses his crunch. Raphael then gets hit with a slash, which is fine, and then the Houndstone lands his Phantom Force, but we take the hit well. A second lockjaw does take out the Houndstone, and a crunch from Raphael breaks Mimikyu's disguise, making it vulnerable. I go for the big brain play, protecting with Donatello, while Raphael can go for a plus two, stab, Earthquake, which somehow Toxtricity survives, although Mimikyu does fall. This time Raphael protects as he's very low, and a hyper voice tickles Donatello before a lockjaw delivers a final blow. There's a giant robot elephant rolling around all over the side of desert, and you know what? For some reason, this bothers me. Leonardo steps in, surfs a robot elephant once, scaring it away. We then chase it down, surf it a few more times at the expense of Ivan Scovillian. Sorry, mate. But it gets the job done, and the Titan is no more. Our blue turtle was not quite satisfied with that battle, so we traverse through a cave that leads us to our next destination, Alfonada City, where we can find Tulip and her psychic Pokemon. The makeup specialist throws in a giraffe, who watches Leonardo set up with a shell smash before setting up a reflect. Getting greedy, we go for yet another shell smash, but it pays off as a Zen headbutt misses, and, well, the giraffe just dies. Gardevoir comes in, Gardevoir gets flash cannon, then Gardevoir proceeds to die. Espartha also comes in, but we drown the bird with a surf. Last is her flourges, and a surf can easily... Oh no, it survived. It then goes for a huge moon blast on Leonardo, but our boy proves he's just as thick, living on 15 HP before punishing the flower with a second surf. Back to the snow we go, as there's just one more gym leader left for us to deal with. Grusha uses powerful... Uh, um... Ice types? Yeah, the, the final gym leader literally uses one of if not the weakest types in the game. But that sounds like a Grusha problem to me. So, let's dance. Frostmoth uses a Tailwind, which, um, okay. I mean, Michelangelo is pretty slow. But anyway, Michelangelo can go for a Curse, sacrificing his speed for strength. The Icy Bug goes for a Blizzard, which is a not very effective move, but still kind of hurts, while Michelangelo then double downs, going for a second Curse, getting even stronger. We protect for leftover health, and then on the next turn, the Frostmoth goes for another Tailwind, giving us a free kill with a Flame Wheel. Bear Tick hits us with an Earthquake, but we eat the hit well, and then we can take out the Bear with a Flame Wheel. See, Titan goes for a Liquidation, which we can take, before a Flame Wheel does just over half. We trade blows one more time, but this time a flame wheel gets the job done. Unfortunately, Michelangelo is getting low, so Donatello tags in, eats a hurricane, before tossing a pile of rocks on Altaria twice, sending it to its grave. Normally at this point of a Pokemon game, we would take out eight gym badges, go straight to the league, smack around the Elite Four members, and embarrass the champion in their own home ground, but we still have Ortega and Eerie from Team Star lurking around, and one last Titan Pokemon causing havoc. So let's go deal with them first. Starting with Team Star, we raid the Fairy Base, beat up some Pokemon, and then we watch as Ortega comes out on his car with his stupid smug face. 
Raphael can bullet seed the Azumarill, and thanks to a crit, it falls in just three hits. With Wigglytuff, we go straight for an Earthquake, doing devastating damage, although it does survive, and then it drops an attack with a charm. A second Earthquake does get the KO on Wigglytuff, forcing Adagus to bring in Dash Bun. Due to our attack being lowered, Michelangelo can come in, and Ortega starts running his mouth. Have a taste of this slick move. Bet you can't handle my Pokemon's adorable strength. Yeah, that was pathetic. Michelangelo goes for back-to-back -back earthquakes, but because of Babel Doll Eyes dropping our attack, Leonardo comes in and finishes off the dog with a flash cannon. The Star Mobile is Ortega's last hope, but Leonardo is just too good, and after trading blows with the car, we can come out on top victorious. Before we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a false dragon titan, there's a useful TM that will come in handy, so just in this cave here, we can grab it, Dragon Pulse. Okay, Don Donzo, I'm coming for you. The giant fish jumps out of the water, takes a few bullet seeds straight to its face, realizes he's outmatched, and then goes back into the water to swim away. Yeah, not on my watch, buddy. We follow the fish, start the second phase, bullet seed its face some more, and then this time it goes down for good. But he was just the warm-up, as the Tatsuguri comes out swinging, wanting to fight. Yeah, my brain just said that this thing, which has no arms, came out swinging. Yeah, I'm kind of special, guys. Sorry. Regardless, Donatello with Dragon Pulse can take care of the piece of sushi, finishing off the last Titan of the game. And you should all know the drill by now. Ivan gets his herbs, the guy makes us a sandwich, and we get our photo together. One last objective to complete is to defeat the final Team Star base, protected by Eerie and her fighting Pokemon. Although there are some preparations required to make this battle go smoothly, so first we head to the Chansey store and pick up a Jolly Mint. And on top of that, I just grab all the Carbos I can afford. Then I use as much Carbos as I can on Donatello, along with a Jolly Mint, to make our turtle as fast as possible. After that, we can get our hands on a powerful TM, Helping Hand. N wait, no, that's not right. Okay, let's try this one over here. Yep, that's what I'm looking for, Swords Dance. All right, time to take on Eerie. Donatello starts off going for an Iron Defense, doubling our defense, which means a Brick Break now hurts a lot less. We also protect between turns, getting extra health recovery from leftovers, before setting up with Iron Defenses two more times, getting us to plus six in defense. Oh, and by the way, Donatello has Shell Armor, so we can't be critted. Now we can start using Swords Dances on the Toxic Croak, getting us to plus six, while Brick Breaks do pathetic damage, especially after leftovers recovery. So yeah, I'm sure you can all see where this is going. The car crumbles in front of us, and then Eerie gets on her knees in awe of my power. The Pokemon League is firmly on our sights, and we make our way to the building and waste no time taking on the first member, Rika and her ground Pokemon. Raphael is in charge for this battle, and an expert belt bullet seed can annihilate the poor Wishcash. Rika then thinks she's smart, bringing in a fire type, but I have Earthquake, and so yeah, it's dead. Donphan is annoying because of Sturdy, but with Bullet Seed, we hit it multiple times, not allowing Sturdy to activate, but it only hits three times, and it can survive anyway. An Iron Head comes our way, but it barely puts a dent on us, and then Donphan goes down on the next turn. Dugtrio sets up a Sandstorm, and then literally dies to a single Bullet Seed. Yeah, that's kind of pathetic. Last is a Tressalize Clodsire, but this thing can do nothing, as Raphael can Bullet Seed it straight back to Rika. We are then given some babysitting duties, as we see Poppy making her way through the door, wielding Steel-type Pokemon. Michelangelo starts things off as Copperaja goes for a Stealth Rocks, and we can get off a free curse on the Elephant. Copperaja then goes for a High Horsepower, which doesn't hurt too much, and our turtle is in no mood to show mercy, going for a second curse. On the third turn, we protect for some sweet, sweet leftovers recovery, before taking another High Horsepower for even less damage, while getting off another curse, becoming almost unstoppable. We repeat the process one more time, getting to plus three in attack and defense before we start the attack. Copperaja tries one last time to stop Michelangelo with a high horsepower, but it fails miserably and it goes down to a big flame wheel. Bronzong tries his luck also with an earthquake, but we're just too thick and the bell is melted into a puddle with a flame wheel. Corviknight sets up with an iron defense, which allows him to survive a flame wheel from us, but a body press is nowhere near enough to take us out and we finish off the bird with a second flame wheel. 
Magnezone sets up a light screen, which makes no sense, but it can also survive a hit thanks to Sturdy. A discharge from the giant Magna does actually hurt a bit, but it's still not enough and it falls to a second flame wheel. Finally, she brings in her Tinker Tong, who has Stone Edge, which has a high crit chance, so I play it safe, switching in Raphael, who can eat a Stone Edge, and then a huge Shura Slides Gigaton Hammer before crushing the Tinker Tong with a super effective Earthquake. Next up, we have Larry, who is looking happy as ever. Donatello is now in the lead, going for a Rock Polish, doubling his speed, while Tropius absorbs the sunlight, going for a Solar Beam. But before he can even use the move, a quad effective Ice Spinner can destroy the Flying Plant. Strapta comes in and intimidates Donatello, so we have no choice but to go for a Sword Stance, bringing our attack back up before taking insane damage from a close combat. However, one Ice Spinner later from Donatello is all it takes to get rid of the Strapta. Altaria is also just wasting time by coming in and also gets one-shotted. Oricorio comes in for no reason as well and just dies to an Ice Spinner. Last is his ace Flamingo and it even terrestrializes, but even this bird stood no chance and one ice spinner sends it straight back to Larry. Hassel is the final member of the Pokemon League standing between me and Gita. Noivern can outspeed Leonardo, landing a Super Fang, doing exactly half of our health of damage. But our turtle doesn't care as he goes for a Shell Smash, dropping his defenses but raising everything else. And well, it's over for Hassel. Noivern gets ice beamed and dies. Dragalki gets ice beamed and dies. Flapple gets ice beamed and dies. Hatcheress gets Ice Beam and dies. Baxcalibur on the other hand, actually no, it just gets Ice Beam and it's dead. That beating was so bad, it made a grown man cry. Our final test is against La Primera herself, Gita. Raphael starts getting hit hard by a Lumina Crash from Espartha before he decides to just eat Gita's bird with a big crunch. Veluzzo is our next Pokemon, and I made a misplay, staying in and getting hit with a crazy Ice Fang, but thankfully he's a tank and he proceeds to crunch Gita's fish, although it does survive. Leonardo comes in, taking an Aqua Jet, and then eliminates the Veluzzo with a Surf. As expected, it's Gagoat next, so Michelangelo tags in, eating a Horn Leech, and then getting flinched from a zen headbutt on the next turn. Thinking I'm smart, I protect for leftovers health, but Gita's goat goes for a bulk up, getting stronger. It then goes for another bulk up, while our turtle uses flamethrower, which is just short from the kill. A zen headbutt comes our way, which kinda hurts, but it doesn't flinch us, meaning we can barbecue the goat with a second flamethrower. Gita then brings an overlug, and for the first time ever, Michelangelo can outspeed a Pokemon. He goes for a flamethrower, and he can just melt this giant slab of ice into a puddle. King Gambit takes the stage, and a Stone Edge almost takes us out. But we hang on and go for a flamethrower, bringing it below half health. Leonardo switches in for free as the next Stone Age misses, and then we can wash away the King Gambit with a big surf. Gita now brings in her ace Glamora, who can hit Leonardo with a sludge wave before barely surviving a surf from us. Glamora desperately tries to take out Leonardo with a Terra Blast, but it fails, meaning one last surf from Leonardo can drown the Glamora, making us champions. But don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. You see, Gita here was just a warm up for the true final battle of the game. We meet up with Arvin at the lighthouse, only to find out that his dad is trapped in Area Zero and needs our help. Yet, he needs the help of a 12 year old boy who can barely make a sandwich properly. Before we can even enter Area Zero, we need to smack Arvin and his Pokemon around, which completes the Path of Legends quest that he gave us. Then it's Director Clavel who needs a beating at the Academy, followed by the leader of Team Star, which turns out to be Penny. This completes the Starfall Street quest given to us by Cassiopeia. And then Finally, we meet up with Nomona for our final battle, which is just Leonardo shell smashing and then one-shotting her entire team, completing the final quest, Victory Road. With all those done and dusted, we make our way to the entrance of Area Zero, where we can meet up with Arvin, beginning one last quest of the game, the way home. Arvin, Namona, Penny and myself all jump on my ride on, who can fly us down to the bottom of Area Zero. Once we reach the lab entrance, we go inside, which... Uh, spoiler alert, I guess. Professor Tiro is dead, and this is just an AI version of him. He takes us down to the deepest part of Area Zero in this very, very expensive looking room, I might add, where we start the final battle. Leonardo is the leader of the gang, well, behind me, of course. So he gets a start and takes the lead against Iron Moth. Iron Moth outspeeds, which is good, as we can take a discharge comfortably before his defense is dropped from the Shell Smash, which also sharply raises his speed and attack stats. So, um, yeah, I know this is the final boss and all, but, uh, well, just watch. Yep. 
Yep, our boy Leonardo is too strong, defeating Tura on his own and giving me my first deathless run in a while actually. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.